Aha, I forgot to mention in my update that another video that I'm going to make is the third in the series on my life in the USSR. Now, I want to read to you one of the comments uh, to my first video, a comment by Lengthy and Arthur, an excellent, excellent YouTuber. If you're not subscribed, you should be. I know some of you are. Uh, if you're not checking out, uh, anyway, this is what he writes. My parents grew up in the 50s and 60s with TVs, radios, multi-rooms, all larger than your larger room. And if you've watched the first video, you'll know what he's referring to. And typically a car for each parent and one for each kid once they were 16, plus things like pianos, lawnmowers, power tools, phones, and numerous household appliances. Totally middle class, maybe even lower middle class, yet incomparably superior in, even, in uh, every qualifiable, quantifiable way to the USSR even comparing 50s in the US to the 80s in the USSR. That's actually entirely correct. I'm trying to keep this pipe going. Anyway, I decided to put some quantitative flavor into that story. And I did some research. And I'm going to share that research with you now. I looked up whatever information I could find. Shit, this is not working. I looked up uh, every from every bit of information I could find on consumer prices in the U.S. And I decided to focus on the year 1981. no particular reason other than I was able to find a lot of data for 1981 for the US. So anyway, I ran those numbers and um, what I'm doing is I am comparing real wages here. Meaning, I'm not just taking like wage figures for the USSR and for the US and then using some kind of uh, currency conversion ratio comparing comparing prices for you know, consumer goods. Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm 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 con I'm uh, comparing real wages, meaning um, how much of their monthly income do people have to spend, both in the USSR and in in the US, comparing those to buy a certain quantity of a certain good. So I'm comparing milk, eggs, potatoes, bananas, beef sausage, coffee, sugar, cars, chicken, candy. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple more numbers that I couldn't find comparable numbers, uh, the U.S. numbers for, but I think they're interesting nonetheless. So here goes. What I used for wages, I looked up U.S. government statistics. Sorry, I couldn't find anything better. For average hourly wage in the U.S. for 1981, I took a typical 168 hour month and I calculated the, the average monthly wage to be approximately $1,260 for 1981. I took the Russian average wage, monthly wage, to be 100 rubles. Now, some people made more, other people made less. I don't know how accurate that, that is as an average figure for the country. I know uh, a few things that uh, I believe justify my choice of 100 rubles a month as an average salary. Uh, when you were a, a recent college graduate uh, in engineering, for example, not an assembly line worker, your starting salary was about 90. And then after a few years, you, you could probably work your way up to 100. Then another, another couple of years, uh, maybe more, and then 105, maybe 110. My father, when I was growing up, my father was in his 40s. He was making 120, and then he was making 140, which was, you know, not bad. Um, my uh, stepmother was making uh, the last figure I remember was I think 120. Um, a lot of people made less, like a sales clerk in, in the store would make 65, maybe 70 rubles a month. And again, we're talking about Leningrad. Leningrad and Moscow, uh, to the exception of pretty much every other place. Maybe some other bigger cities were comfortable in the level of wages, but Leningrad and Moscow were 
the avant-garde of uh, prosperity in the USSR, if that term is even applicable here. Um, so the majority of, of uh, you know, roughly 150 million population lived in worse conditions. Now, I'm not even touching on the fact that uh, prosperity was not j simply measured by what you were making, but also what was available for you to spend your money on. A lot of the things that uh, were sometimes available in Leningrad and Moscow were not, routinely not, available to people in other places. Uh, my mother-in-law, who's staying with us right now, uh, over from Russia, she's come over for a few weeks, as she does every summer, um, she was telling me this morning how you know, her mother lives in uh, a small town near, a very small town near Pskov. Pskov is about three and a half hours drive from St. Petersburg, Leningrad, and uh, the town of Porkhov that she's talking about is, is much smaller than Pskov. So it's basically like an overgrown village or something. I, I don't know what the population is. I can't give you the figures or how many thousand people they, you know, live there. Um, but uh, she said every summer when they would go to visit her mother, they would take, um, they would buy groceries like beef, some vegetables, uh, pasta, and they would take it there because those things were impossible to buy. Over there you could buy maybe bread, milk, and eggs maybe, sometimes potatoes. Potatoes were, were actually quite seasonal. And some grains like, I don't know, buckwheat. I, I know people in the U.S. don't eat buckwheat. Uh, it's actually quite healthy and, uh, you know, some Russian stores, most Russian stores, uh, grocery stores in the U.S., carry buckwheat and so the Russians like buckwheat and they, they, they cook it um, so it's a kind of a, you know, works out to be a kind of a porridge but anyway um, that's it it's like some grains bread and maybe potatoes sometimes that's it they had to buy everything else in Leningrad and bring it over there so keep that in mind so I think I think a hundred rubles a month is justified um, so here goes then, um, and I'm going to give you the ratio of how much more things were expensive in terms of purchasing power based on the average monthly wage to a, a Soviet citizen in uh, like mid-80s comparing to uh, retail uh, price data for the U.S., which I, is actually pretty well documented uh, for the U.S. for 1981. So here goes. Gallon of milk was six times more expensive in the USSR. Um, a dozen eggs cost almost 17 times more than eggs in the USSR. In the USSR, they, and, and in Russia today, they don't sell them by the dozen, they sell them by you know, 10 eggs, like 10 egg cartons, uh, which was interesting. I was grocery shopping in St. Petersburg uh, a couple months ago, and I, I looked at the, at the egg carton, and my brain was telling me, something's wrong with this carton. It's too short. And then I realized, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't hold up. A dozen, it, it just holds 10 um, so eggs almost 17 times uh, more expensive in the USSR. Potatoes uh, 4.6 times more expensive. Okay. Uh, bananas. Ooh, this is a big one. 34.7 times more expensive. Now, if if you watch my other video, bananas were mostly not available. Like uh, they were a luxury. Like fruit, generally fruit and fresh vegetables were not available. I mean, I don't know if you want to count potatoes as, as vegetables. Potatoes were available most of the time, not always, and they were seasonal, so you would get like you know slightly cheaper prices and uh, you know summer and fall. But bananas, to get bananas was a big you know like a lucky thing, if you if you could if you could buy bananas and bring them home, and they were extremely expensive. Like I said, almost thirty five times. Uh, more expensive in the USSR than the US in the 1980s. Beef. Okay, beef um, is a, like the nominal price of beef was about 2 rubles a kilo, which works out to about 4.4 .4 rubles a pound. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 not 4.4. Not I'm sorry, it's the other way around. You divide by 2.2. So, yeah, it's, it's less than a ruble a pound. Um, slightly less than a ruble a pound, you know, like 90 copics a pound. But, but the nominal price was set by the state, as were all the other prices. But the thing is, uh, like, I don't know how exactly it worked, but uh, it appears that um, grocery stores would get, like, a, a, a chunk of beef, like half a cow or something, and then the butcher, the resident butcher in the store, would carve it up into pieces, and then those pieces would be sold. Now... The general population was only able to buy, by and large, only 
like really low grade beef, like bad cuts, lots of uh, cartilage and, and bone. So half of that weight was bone, um, and it wasn't it wasn't really nice. Like like I don't know, we're not talking filet mignon. We're not talking steaks, boneless steaks or whatever. We're not even ta talking, you know, the bone in steaks. Okay, we're talking really low grade beef. So if you account for that, whenever they were when, when they were available, which was not a lot of the time, the uh, the beef was th uh, hold on, where am I? Oh, okay, yeah. So it was it was four times more expensive. Now, if you if you want, if you absolutely had to get beef, you had to go to this like Kolhoz market, like electric farm market or farm market, where small farmers were allowed. You know, towards the end of the USSR, they were allowed to sell like uh, produce um, that was grown, or raised privately on very, very small farms. And when I when I say very small, I mean um, poof. I'm trying to convert the uh, the areas from like hectares hectares to acres. Um, okay, so my my lot here is one quarter of an acre, uh, but it's 900 square meters so an acre is an acre is about 36 hundred square meters um, well one-sixth of an acre one-sixth of an acre was a typical land plot that you were allowed to own if you if you were lucky enough to be able to own uh, like real estate a very small summer house out in the country um, so anyway uh, yeah people people raised some crops uh, veggies um, and some people uh, apparently raised cattle as well. So if you had to get beef, you would have to go to the market, and the price was three times the price in the store, and the beef was better. Um, so that was 12 times more expensive than the U.S. So four, if you were lucky to get the very low-quality beef, four times more expensive than fairly high-quality beef, I would expect. I mean, nobody would buy that kind of beef uh, with choices available in the US supermarkets uh, in 1981 but there you have it so the real beef like comparable beef 12 times um, sausage about six times more expensive um, coffee about 26 times more expensive chicken 21 times more expensive chocolate candy 9.7 times more expensive okay uh, oh cars okay cars now, I believe I talked a little bit about Russian cars, Soviet cars. So you have your, your, your most ubiquitous car is a Lada, which is a clone of a Fiat um, uh, Italian 1966 design. And mind you, they, they only recently stopped producing those. So they, they sort of evolved the concept a little bit, but they didn't really go f too far from that 1966 design. It was... Apparently it was pretty hot in Europe in 1966, uh, but we're talking 1981, 1985, and even into the 1990s and even into 2000s when they were still being produced. So it was a really bare bones car, no power steering, no power windows, no nothing. Uh, air conditioning? Forget air conditioning. What's air conditioning? Um, anyway, so it's a really bare bones kind of, you know, entry level doesn't even begin to describe it, right? So what do I compare it to? What car in the U.S. in 1981 do I compare it to? Anyway, I looked up some entry-level cars. So Dodge Colt um, appears to be a fairly entry-level car. I I am 100% sure that was superior to the Lada in every way, but still, let's let's just say, let's just take that. That cost $6,000 in 1981, new, right? Well, guess what? The Lada cost $6,000 rubles in the USSR, right? And remember, we're talking about the monthly wage of 100 rubles, so we're talking about 60 monthly wages. That means five years of wages was how much a car cost, okay? So that amounts to the difference of 12.6 times, okay? 12.6 times. Now, for comparison, if you take uh, an entry-level car today, which is you know, superior, immensely superior to the Lada in the US today, I guess it would be fair to say that an entry-level car could be had for, I don't know, fourteen, fourteen and a half thousand dollars, like a, a Hyundai uh, Accent or something, right? Uh, well, how would you like having that car be offered at one hundred eighty thousand dollars? Okay, 
think about it. An entry-level car, like a Korean car, or I don't know, a, like a Chevy Cruze or something, being offered at eight, what, a hundred and eighty thousand dollars, with an average salary of about fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. That's the prosperity we're talking about here. Uh, the level of prosperity that we're talking about here. Uh, so yeah, um, now um, the U.S. has obviously gotten richer uh, since uh, 1981, meaning people have to work less to get the same. We're not comparing quality because again, today's cars are superior uh, in safety, fuel efficiency, comforts, and all you know, pretty much every single aspect you can think of to the 1981 cars in the U.S. But if we if we compare those prices, then you know, so so okay, milk would cost twenty one dollars today if we were in the Soviet Union. You know, look at your like income level. Look at uh, you know. Take a look at the grocery prices in the store. Think milk twenty one dollars a gallon. Think eggs thirty three dollars sixty cents a dozen. Think uh, bananas at twenty four dollars a pound. Think a cars, entry level cars, and one hundred eighty thousand dollars, okay, and think chicken forty three point five dollars a pound. That's what we're talking about. That's how poor people were over there. Um, what else? Oh yeah, uh, I couldn't really find any comparable figures, but a pair. My mother in law was telling me like a pair of winter boots. Um, if you didn't want to get a Soviet-made pair that would only last, barely last one season, then it would begin to leak and the and the um, sole would begin to come off. And I, I know, that's absolutely true. I've worn those. Um, they don't survive the snow and the mud very well. So if you if you wanted something better, like a Yugoslavian-made or, you know, you know, made in Finland, something, you know, there's a part where you have to run around the city like crazy trying to locate them and then stand in lines to get like a voucher to get into another line and then stand there for another day to get into the store and there's only one variety and you're praying that they have your size, right? But if you were lucky to be able to jump through all these hoops successfully, you would have to fork over 70 rubles a pair to get a pair of winter boots, okay? Like, I don't know, uh, we're talking about 70% 70 70 of your monthly wage to get a pair of shoes, okay? I don't know, let's say, what's, uh, today's average salary is about um, $4,200 a month, okay? In the US, $4,200 a month. Imagine having to pay Oh no! Um, so 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 a pay. Let's say we're talking about a really expensive pair of winter boots. Let's say they're one hundred and forty dollars, right? Well, that's still one thirtieth, meaning three percent, roughly, of your monthly wage, average monthly wage. Well, three percent. How does three percent compare to seventy percent? Well, it's about it's twenty two, twenty three times more expensive. So that's compared to today i i'm sure that today we're richer in the us than we were in you know th like 30 years ago but still today 23 times more expensive it it would have been 23 times more expensive uh in the in the ussr in the mid 80s than it is today in the us i i think these figures are mind boggling i think they're completely shocking <sighs> like use these to talk to people that you know who admire socialism and who believe that it worked or that it can work, just just take these figures and share them with them. And you can look all of that up. And if you, if you read Russian, you can find like forums, internet forums where people post uh, their recollections of their time in the USSR. I actually gathered a lot of my pricing information from there because I don't remember. Like I, you know, my parents would send me grocery shopping to the nearby, you know. Supermarket. I, I can't call it supermarket. Uh, like a grocery store, uh, a rundown <laughs> building with some groceries in there, and you would have to, you know, you, you go shopping for like um, for 
milk. You would take a a a jug, uh, um, like a jug, a metal, you know, aluminum jug uh, for milk because it was uh, it was uh, loose milk. Um, they had bottled milk too, but you know, a lot of the time you would buy loose milk. Also, loose sour cream. I would take a, a glass jar with a plastic lid, and they would put the jar on the, on the scales, and you know, note the uh, note the weight of the jar, and then add the uh, add the sour cream. And I would buy like a kilo at a time. And God forbid if you drop that thing, cause, you know, it's, it's a splat. It's all over the pavement, and your parents are mad at you. Um, potatoes, yeah. <laughs> I remember that, but I don't remember the prices so much. Um, so yeah, there you have it.